So we're going to do that, and we're trying to figure out which device has to be muted and which doesn't. So thank you, Coach Kennedy. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Weird camera issues uh, with Coach Rakowskis, and we're going to make it work. Um, he has been patient and, and awesome working this morning, so thank you for that. Uh, first of all, we want to thank our sponsor, ByteSpeed, again this morning. ByteSpeed uh, Gravity Gaming by ByteSpeed offers free, no-pressure esports consultations that include professional advice, resources, and suggestions for your esports program. They have numerous partnerships and helpful resources that can help your esports program succeed. Whether you're just starting a new program or trying to grow it, their expert team can walk you through steps of implementing your program, recommend customized esports PCs to fit your exact needs, and suggest resources for funding, competition, and more. So thank you so much, Gravity Gaming by ByteSpeed, for being here with us through this conference. They have an expo that's digital expo you guys can check out at any point throughout the day when you have some free time. Just hit that expo button on the left side of Hopin, and you can check out what they have to offer. So uh, looking forward to this day, everybody. We have some things we want to draw your attention to. Uh, there's more networking sessions today than there have been uh have that free time, hit that networking button on the left. It's going to randomly partner you with someone else that hits it. You'll talk for about four minutes. You have the option to extend that talk if you want to keep that communication going, or you can move on and meet more people. If you've already talked to someone that you get matched up with, you can also just move on from them and talk to someone new or keep talking to them if you liked them a lot. Uh, so make sure you make use of that networking time. It was really cool yesterday when we got to use it. Um, we are also, you also have functionality of sending messages to each other. So when you are in that networking session, you can hit the connect button at the top, right? It'll share your contact information with each other. And then you can message each other or find people in the chat. You can just right click on their name and hit send a message and communicate with them. If something comes up that you want to talk to them about, uh, as far as our sessions to go, uh, today go, we have, um, a session about how to run your tryouts. that's going to be happening. We have a session on how to coach Valorant. Uh, the president of U of University of Illinois Esports will be speaking today. We're going to have an awesome Girls Who Game panel. Um, we're going to have an uh, esports facility building session. We're going to have a session about fostering a healthy esports club and why that's important. Um, tomorrow, we've actually moved the Overwatch coaching session to tomorrow. Um, please take a look at the IHSCA Twitter. We've made a statement regarding the Active Blizzard, uh, Active Blizzard walkout today happening in California. And uh, please take a look at that statement. We are not going to be talking about Overwatch today. Tomorrow, Coach Terpstra will address uh, why we moved that at the beginning of the session. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the IHSCA over Twitter or by reaching out to us at uh, uh, T, T McFarlane at IHSCA.org. Uh, Todd would be very happy to talk to anyone that has any questions about that. Uh, and then we have an uh, Extra Life presentation later tonight. And uh, past that, we hope you guys enjoy your presentations today. We're going to start off with Coach Rakowski talking about why esports matter for our opening keynote. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, turn off my camera, and turn the show over to him. Uh, but we're going to get the show on the road. Enjoy your day, everybody, and let any of the staff members know if you guys have any questions. So, Coach Rack, it's all yours. Thank you, Coach Dalton. Uh, yeah, so here we go. So everyone is here because we are either interested in esports, we want to start esports, or we're just curious what it all entails. Um, today, I'm going to share with you briefly uh, our success story here at Unit 5, which is in Bloomington Normal. Um, it's important to note before we get started, especially for those who are here as beginner sponsors or coaches, that the success story I don't think is unique. I think it's something that happens across many schools. And uh, I'm pretty excited because uh, what I saw happen at Unit 5, I know can happen at other schools. And I've known it's happened at other schools. So it's pretty, pretty cool stuff. So here we go, let's begin. So a couple of quotes I wanna bring up that uh, I sort of remind myself of as as I work with my my players and my program, um, and I decided to pick two from Illinois since we are the IHSEA. First one, Michael Jordan. Some people want it to happen, some wish it to happen, others make it happen. And uh, if you're here today, you're going to be that third group. You're going to be the ones that are going to make this happen for your students. And we're going to talk about why that's important and uh, why you want esports at your school and you want to expand your esports. Uh, second one is uh, Phil Jackson quote. Um, make sure you guys, uh, when you set up your clubs and your teams, this is even for veteran programs, uh, you're always building that trust. And uh, you know you have a good team or a great team when individuals will sacrifice or surrender to me for the we. Uh, so I included some pictures up here of different various groups that have I have touched and have touched me uh, since we started this journey about three, four years ago. 
I'm not going to go through this too fast, but uh, with us starting late, we're just going to move on. But yeah, we're going to be talking about community culture, competition, and value. So four themes that I think uh, are all intertwined. Um, but when you look to establish your program, start a program, or even grow your program, I think these are four things that you have to keep on your radar at all time. So let's start back four years ago. Uh, here's a picture of the OG, the original gangsters. Here are the uh, four students, Luke, Cam, Quinn, and Quessy. One's not pictured, Ty. But these are the four students who four years ago decided to lay the framework for what was going to become our esports slash gaming community. Um, when we sat down the first semester, uh, we didn't do a whole lot of competitive stuff, which is going to surprise a lot of people. It was literally just getting together, playing video games, and then we spent an entire semester, each time we met for about five minutes to a half hour, just talking about what we want our club, our community, our esports community to look like, uh, what are our values, our norms, what we want to get out of it, and what we want to build. And so... Uh, some of the quotes there are taken directly from our mission statement. Yeah, I made the kids sit down. And uh, funny thing is, is they had to uh, create a um, mission statement. And it was interesting to see how the mission statements actually changed. It won't be the same from the starting group. And I, I assume it's going to change as we move forward. But this is where we're at right now. Uh, the big thing is, is we want our community, we want to help develop each individual students' interpersonal and 21st century skills. Uh, that's a very valuable piece. Um, and I'll we'll come back to that later on and how this sort of came full circle. But those interpersonal 21st century skills, um, gamers automatically sort of already use it in their day-to-day -day life. Uh, they already have a good skill set, a natural skill set. And to enhance those skills is super valuable. The next thing is that our members and athletes can uh, just gather, you know, weekly and share their interest in esports. So we want people to come, our members to have somewhere to come, to have a community to sort of belong. And the last one is we want to make sure it's open to all. And we can't, I cannot emphasize that part, open to all. Um, it's my personal and professional belief that the students who came forth, who wanted to start this community, um, they, they didn't feel like they belong. They felt like they were just awash in the sea at high school and uh they wanted to create something where everyone was welcomed uh because i think a lot of them felt like some doors were closed on them so i i understood that and so as we rolled out our mission statement it was really important that it was for everyone and uh dalton go ahead and uh, interrupt me anytime if questions come in and if anyone has any questions feel free to uh shoot them out in, in chat and dalton will let me know so so where do we start? Um, pretty simple. We started with just four or five kids playing Smash in my science lab around one table and one monitor. You know, we had probably two controllers, one unit, and uh, we just played. And that was week one. Week two, a couple more kids showed up interested. So, you know, we, we shared and we played a little bit more. And then week three turned into week four. Um, pretty cool thing. I'm glad I found it. But on the right side of the screen there, you'll see that is uh, our original sign-in sheet for our first official meeting four years ago. Those are the kids that were interested. They just signed their names and, and what game they wanted to play their top game. Um, and it grew. Um, three years ago, or I should say the year right before COVID, <clears throat> so I'd be like 2020, spring of 2020, uh, we were pushing roughly about 75 to 80 kids were coming weekly uh, we had expand from my one lab room to two rooms and then uh, from those two rooms we expanded down we expanded down to the science lab uh, you can see in this picture down at the bottom here's coach fletcher from Illinois wesleyan he's he's retired on to the uso i believe um or osu or whatever i'm not sure where uso i believe but uh, he came, talked to our players about what it's like to be a college sport player. And, of course, Little Caesars. Uh, I knew the club was getting big because I always purchased the pizza for the students. And, you know, you buy two pizzas, it's $10. That's not too bad. You get to 20 it's not too bad. And then I realized when I went to Little Caesars one day and I, I ordered 15 pizzas, 
I, I knew I knew we were getting too big. Uh, I knew we were getting big, and I shouldn't say too big, but uh, it was it was a place for the kids to come, hang out, and uh, really have a sense of community. And I, I can't stress this enough. Um, you will get all stripes of students that come through that door, and uh, as you will find out later, 70, 60 to seventy percent of the students that came through that door did no other extracurricular activity, which means they had zero connection to our high school. So 60%, so we're looking at about 35, 40 kids that came through that door. This was the only thing they ever did extra. And uh, it's it's really important. So as we got bigger, um, we, we knew we wanted to have a little bit more of a seriousness to it, just not get to be a club and play all random video games. Some kids started to get interested in the actual esports side. When we think of esports, not so much, you know, a club sport or just a being in a club. So we decided that we were going to make West Esports Academy. This would be our, I would say, this would be our second evolution. It took us, you know, about a year to get to this point where now the students wanted to organize practice sessions. They want to talk about tactical things and how to play. Um, and they still wanted to be open play, but they really wanted to, you know, zero in on one game or two. Uh, they wanted to compete in tournaments. That was a goal. They set out their second year. I remember coming back like, we really want to go compete. Um, I'm sick of being up on the same people here at the club. And people in the club wanted to compete against other students. So that that was that was a big part of our our push to go to the esports academy and, and sort of becoming a little bit more semi competitive. Uh, we started just internally playing each other everything from Smash to League of Legends. And then we started then looking outward and wanting to play other people and other teams. On the flip side of that, uh, open play really started to grow. Started to grow, I should say. Um, interesting enough, as, as our own West team grew, and we started playing more and we had the space. And I think uh, the players were advocating for themselves and they were getting the space and resources. Uh, we started drawing players and students from other schools in our town so in our town we have bloomington high school u high central catholic and then normal community all within 10 minutes drive and little by little players from these other schools started trickling into the club hours uh, i'd get random emails hey do you mind if i come play and i'm like let me check with my principal or a coach would say hey i got three or four players that want to come over and play do you mind if they just come over and play and i'm like yeah more the merrier so community, pretty big deal. Uh, we have our West Esport Academy, which is, which, which I would say was really profound. It, it woke me up to the actual demand because our school, Normal West, um, we're a great school. But when I started hearing about students wanting to come to our school because we had esports there, especially from our local magnet school, U High, we had one or two kids who decided to actually come to our school because of it. Um, that really sort of like blew my mind of, wow, there is a huge demand for this. And, and the kids were networking outside of me telling them to, they knew each other and uh, they, they were coming to play. So a uh, little picture there, Chris Farley. That's, uh, that's my reaction when the kids said they wanted to start getting a little bit more competitive. And I was like, let's go, let's do it. And so I was I was pretty pumped up. I'm pretty sure that's what they thought of me when they saw it, too. So at this point, we're about a year and a half in and we have a very strong community. We, we've built a community and. Uh, what we the next big step that we took, which was probably the most visible step, was this idea of identity. Um, I didn't I didn't realize this. Um, much like a lot of people here today, I was very much so a traditional athlete, and that's why I identified as, and that that was already made. But in our building, we really didn't have an identity for kids who are interested in strategy games, video games, um, casting, anything that had to do with esports. So we decided let's let's roll a jersey, and uh, we looked around, and we uh, had some students create this jerseys or the various jerseys. Uh, that was a big thing about the club is I wanted the students to do most of the actual work um, because that that's the purpose of it. 
And uh, I, I told a student this once and it just stuck. It always stuck in my head and I, I have the Discord chat with it. Um, we were going back and forth with what, what we wanted esports to be at West. And I said something along the lines of, you know, this is not an opportunity to find yourself. This is an opportunity to create yourself. And it just really resonated. And, and I just, I saved that because um, I want the kids to feel as if they have a safe space where they, they can create themselves. They can be what they want to be. And they, and they have that room to grow and, and to build who they want to be, both socially, but also academically. And then with their 21st century skills and, of course, their interpersonal skills. So pretty fantastic stuff. Um, I wasn't sure how many jerseys we were going to sell. And I was surprised when people started ordering jerseys that weren't even really actively on the team or in the clubs. Um, some parents purchased them. People in the community purchased them. I was delivering jerseys to mailboxes. And uh, I, I knew that, wow, this is this is bigger than I thought. Um, and of course, once students start wearing jerseys and shirts in school, uh, other students start to know and they ask questions. What's that about? Especially with the school of 1400. Uh, a lot of times it's hard to message with 1400 students because there's a lot going on. Um, and then teachers start taking notice. Um, and uh, that 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 in itself was was also rewarding because I, I teach in the school and I have teachers come up to me and, and say, hey, your eSport athlete X, you know, was in my class today and they did this. They did a great job. So teachers started to notice the students wearing the jerseys and um, it was cool, especially when um, some students changed some behaviors academically because they were now part of the team. And the teachers definitely noticed from how the student acted before the jersey showed up to after the jersey showed up. There's a there's this time and place where there is a different visual cue in their classroom and uh, they definitely saw different behaviors out of the students, better behaviors. So. Pretty awesome. So as you're going through this, uh, you're thinking to yourself, okay, this seems like a lot. And it really isn't. Com making the community is pretty simple. Just have the kids play. The culture part is is more directional. Sometimes the students need help with that. So, you know, setting up the jerseys was easy. Um, having the students have their input and help design it was easy. Um, the hardest part on my end was the logistics of literally getting the jerseys to the kids. Um, a lot of you are probably thinking about, well, I wanna do this. What is it like uh, if you were looking at being a sponsor? And this, all there's various websites um, and they all have like shops. So literally the parents and the kids pay the, the people directly. A lot of times they can ship it to them directly or they ship it to the school. And so that a lot of that's taken care of. So I, want, I, I don't want anyone to be like freaking out, like, wow, look at the artwork and stuff. Uh, they have artists too. so have your kids work with the artists or have your own local artists do it as well. So, and now that the kids sort of have a presence at school, you know, the community's growing. Um, I always, it's important that uh, you get on the hype train because uh, everyone else is being recognized. It's important that our uh, students are recognized as well. Uh, so the first thing I did was year two. Um, I had Luke Sherman, great kid. Uh, I signed him to our PR marketing position. So I said, Luke, you're going to do it. Um, so I was pretty, pretty excited about that. Um, and then the second thing I did is because I wanted official team platforms, I went and I used my school email and I set up various platforms. Uh, you know, first one I think I went to was, was Twitter, set that up. And then I set up a Twitch so our kids could stream. I then went to Facebook and the Facebook's not for the kids. The Facebook, I set up an official group there for the parents because uh, as I found out, Facebook is for boomers. But I also wanted to make sure the parents knew what was going on because that's part of, you know, creating that hype. Um, and then uh, Instagram, a uh, student created Instagram for me because I, I didn't have any interest in that. And so they ran that as well. So I created these different platforms. And then what I had the students do is the students make the articles. They, they, they take the pictures, they send them to me, or they send them to Luke, and then Luke goes ahead and, and posts them. So pretty fantastic. 
Dalton, I don't know if you're talking to me, but your mic's going on and off. Um, third part, and this was the hardest as a teacher and an educator. This one was um, by far the most difficult. It was to promote a team community space on Discord. Uh, I had a lot of reservations about it. I didn't know what it really was. Um, the idea of having kids where they can chat to each other sounded good, but it also sounded like there could be like a lot of risk to it. Um, and uh, this goes back to the original quote where you have to trust. Uh, part of trusting your team is me trusting players and my captains and my officers. And we sat down and uh, they convinced me that Mr. R is OK. We've, we were already using a team discord. Uh, we just want to make it the official team discord. And I said, well, let me check it out. And uh, after checking it out and seeing what was all happening and working with the officers, um, I said, OK, I trust you guys. We're going to do this. We're going to we're going to pull the trigger on this and we're going to have a team discord that uh, is pretty much regulated and managed by the students. Um, I oversee it. And uh, since we've had it now for two and a half years, we've had no problems. Uh, the students follow the, the rules real well. By the way, the students make their own rules for the discord. which. You know, we'll talk about later about community, but they create their own rules and they really get themselves, which is pretty cool. So now we have our Discord, our virtual community. We have all these platforms where we can share what we're doing. I have a PR person and then we just do what we did naturally. Play games. The kids played their games. They played against each other. They got together. We had coaches talk to them and we just share. We just shared our success um, and we just put it out there and let people see what we're doing. And uh, once you do that, you just sort of sit back and you enjoy the ride. Uh, people reshare it, they, they add to it, and uh, the hype train starts. Um, once again, this is important because these are all intermixed, but this cultural part here, our students, just not the esports students, but the community as a whole, they live in a virtual world. Um, yesterday's speaker, I thought, did a great job of really, you know, bringing home the point that that they're way different than we are. And I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to know that totally different than we are. They're different than the kids that graduated, you know, 10 years before them. And they're going to be, and they're different than the kids that, are gonna, that just graduated five years. So these kids are very much so on a virtual uh, community and having this hype train is important because they, they're sharing, they're sharing the story on, on their Instagrams. They're sharing this on their Twitters. Um, they're sharing this on their on their Snapchats too, and so what it does is is it validates it's validating what they're doing, and it's also reestablishing this community. It's it's helping reestablish and grow the community. So, um, as as we started the hype train, as I say, uh, we started seeing I started seeing kids who I didn't even know were interested in esports showing up coming up to me in the hallway i never had the student didn't know who they were never in class and asking me questions about esports wanting to join figuring out how they can join what games we're offering can we play any game do i have to be on a team uh all types of stuff the biggest question i got though is how much does it cost and when i tell every single kid that that i talk to that it's absolutely free no barriers um you can just see that that they get super pumped uh we turn a lot of kids away with cost things entry you know barrier to entry and you can see like that they're like wow this is something i'm interested in it's something i know about and i can share it with my peers and it doesn't cost anything it's pretty profound so in a nutshell what happened was is and this is sort of a kind of where we're at because people get confused why do we call ourselves unit five esports when uh i i coach from normal west and uh it's an easy way of sort of sorting it out is we started as a game club on the left of just guys playing smash and uh when we grew into other games and to become more competitive wanting to work on the competitive side we grew into normal west esports um we sort of dropped the smash controller because we knew there was other games that we still kept controlling the logo we adopted our new w for our school uh this is the west w so we'll sort of up to date with that as well and we dropped the orange 
mostly because uh, normal west is known for being uh silver black and gray or whatnot but uh, our rival school normal community is orange so we sort of dropped it to sort of differentiate from that um but then all good things do come to an end and uh we grew fast and we started drawing kids from all over our district to west to play at our at our um our club meetings our open meetings our open play sessions and uh this is uh i think this is a great lesson for all people who are trying to start is if you get something going in your area it's going to spread to other schools so as more students start showing up um the officers we sat down and this is where i i'm super proud of my students this is uh, an example of not being part of the the me but the we and uh, they recognized that there was a larger gaming community that didn't have the support or necessarily the space and so they said why don't why don't we just become unit 5 esports so uh we can co-op the, the other high school and that way we can have more kids that can play and compete and so uh, we weighed the pros and the cons you can only imagine bringing two rival high schools together in a discord um there is some apprehension um and uh we decided to do it my, my officers a lot of them had to give up potentially starting positions on teams knowing that there'd be other players moving in to, to those positions and they said no this is what's best for esports in our in our area and uh this is what's what's best for for the future club and getting support so we we formed unit five esports and we no longer were the wildcats uh since we were joined with the iron men from normal we became the iron cats so the normal we became the unit five iron cats so pretty cool story in itself that i could probably talk an hour about you know the intricacies of taking two groups merging them and then having a better product versus something that's not as good uh, hopefully the sound picks up for you guys on this i know we're about oh 13 minutes out so this is a short little clip i'm going to show if it show i hope you get the sound uh but someone asked me wh when did we really go from having this kind of club atmosphere hanging out eating pizza growing it to 70 members everyone's welcome here's logan here he's one of our uh handicapped students special needs students um and then you know we start getting identity and then we're we're on this social network these kids are on we're going to where the kids are at that's the important thing we're meeting the kids where they're at when did we when did we when was that one moment i knew that okay we're, we need to start we're, we're, we're going into the competitive we're not we're not getting rid of all this this is still all happening in the background but where do we provide that space that safe space for our kids to be competitive okay and uh, I would say this was it. It was the Capitals Classic Smash Tournament that was hosted in Springfield. I remember showing up and there, I think it was about 100, 110 students coming from all around Illinois uh, to play Smash Brothers. I've never been to a Smash Tournament. And, you know, I had to move earth, I had to move, you know, mountains to, to allow the school to get me a bus. They got me a bus to take, I think, 11, 12 kids down to Springfield to play video games. Um, it was sort of seen as crazy. I thought it was a little bit crazy. Um, it was a Saturday, I believe. I wasn't too thrilled because I had stuff to do, but I went along with it. They wanted me there. So I said, okay, I'll be there. We'll get this done. And this is one of their goals is they wanted to go compete at a tournament. So I'm like, perfect. This gives us it. And so I'm gonna play this for you. And uh, I want uh, there's two views to this. Hopefully you guys can hear this. Tournament here. Take this last stock off the cloud. He will have the tournament, but Deku trying to stay in it. Oh, that's the trip again. Oh, oh good air dodge. Downer would have done it. What oh, are you this doing? Is not a good idea for Cloud. Wow, he snapped that perfectly. Okay. Chasing the roll, though. Yeah. So, Cam is playing yeah, he's great playing. right now. That's going to do that's it. it. Yeah. And Cam takes it 3 1 in the grand finals. Cam is your Capitals Classic champion. Okay, so there in the back right you saw uh one of my original gangsters to the club cam a uh, very soft-spoken kid great kid um type of leader who always led with action and uh so we go down we weren't expecting anything we were just hoping to have a good time and cam made it all the way to the championship and he won uh this is what was put out for our kids to watch back home 
Um, pretty cool stuff. Here. Now, this video is what's actually happening live. This is what I'm seeing. Uh, and I, I was just sitting in the back and you're gonna watch this video, you're gonna see what happens. And uh, I sat there and I, I looked to a parent and I said, here we have a room of 100 students. On average, 70% of these students don't do one other extracurricular activity. And you're going to see this video, and this is powerful. And I thought to myself, we are not meeting these students where they're at. I need to do more. I need my administration to do more. I need the community as a whole to do more. And so you're going to watch this, and you're going to see something that you can even ask teachers. You don't see this much anymore. Maybe if you go to a sporting game, a state championship game, but you don't see this type of behavior much anymore. I have no idea if you could hear that. My favorite was the kid that ran across the front of the screen going, let's go. But you can just see this absolute jubilation. Um, I'm pretty sure if you ask some of these students, teachers, they'd be like, I've never seen that kid so excited in my life. So they were thrilled. Um, most of these kids here aren't even on our team or were from our school. These are from all the different schools and they are just having the time of their life. So uh hats off to springfield capitals uh this was probably the watershed moment that really pushed unit 5 esports forward that that gave me the vision and the motivation to really say okay here are kids 70 percent of these kids in this in this video do no other extracurriculars we have to meet them where they're at so we did and we rolled out teams and uh With that, you know, we, we branded ourselves. We had art teachers make some new graphics for us. Um, I realized that I am a horrible video game player. So I brought on a barrage of coaches to take on various games to help coach the students, uh, to lead them. Uh, mostly because when I worked with my officers, we just, we decided that um, as we grew, we, we, we didn't want to have student coaches. It probably wasn't the best course of action. So. We brought out, and I my hat goes off to these coaches right here. I cannot do what I do day in and day out with Unit 5 Esports without these coaches. And more so, this first roster, this would be our first year roster of Unit 5 Esports. And these aren't all the games that are offered in the ICCA, but these were the games that we had enough interest to field uh, teams that we thought could compete every, every week and uh, have enough players to be there. So hands off to the coaches but also to these students. Um, everything to this point was built on the club. And then to see that, to see these students really rise up and rise above was, was pretty special. Uh, so competition, play it, believe it, achieve it. Uh, everyone asked me, how, how do I compete? Where do I go? Um, I've, I've played them all. I've played done Playverse, I've done HCL, I've done NASF. I've done all the major associations and our platforms, and without a doubt, the IHSEA is by far the best. I can say that without a doubt. Their TOs are amazing. They know the games. Uh, they stay on top of it. Uh, the competitive integrity is really important. You're not going to be playing a team from Ohio and then find out that you know they have a kid from Hawaii who they just met online playing with them. Uh, when, when you're playing Naperville, you're playing Naperville. When you're playing Unit 5, you're playing Unit 5. And the kids from those and the coaches are active. So play it, believe it, achieve it. That was our motto that we sort of came up with when we rebranded ourselves as Unit 5 Esports. And it was really, really important. So and I know we have five minutes. So I'm, I'm going to get to the meat of it. And I apologize. So value. Embrace the suck. COVID-19. <laughs> Uh, 
yeah, last year, total lockdown. Um, I could not be more proud of the young men and women in esports. Um, they they just didn't have resolve. They really embraced the suck. And it's just a term we have in the military where, you know, they had mental toughness. They made it to class. In their group groupmates, they turned their cameras on to help their teachers out because we talked about it at esports. Uh, they stayed on top of their grades. They showed up for their Google Meets classrooms. And uh, more importantly than that, they grew, they grew the entire program during a very difficult time. And they and they relied on this part of their world that we we're not really part of, but we know it exists, the culture. So I cannot underestimate I cannot underestimate how important yeah, how important having that community is. And so here we have 85 plus students. I think we got up to like 105 that day on our first meeting of last year in lockdown. So we had roughly, I could count up to 85 plus, it's almost 107, but we had 100 kids out of 1,400 in our school. That's almost one in 14 kids show up to, to figure out what can they get from esports? What can they get from our esports community? And uh, during COVID, we all know, we all lived through it. It wasn't easy, um, but the esport kids make, made it look easy. And uh, when people always ask me and they have ideas of what an esport kid is or kid that sits at home all day and plays video games, um, I just tell them the stories and what I saw during COVID and how they set up study hall channels. They reached out to each other. They support each other. Um, when people were, you know, maybe getting a little lonely, they pumped them up. It was also a place where kids could just come talk to each other, which they didn't have. A lot of them were very alone, but not the eSport kids. Uh, more than a game. Before COVID, we were pumping out over 300 hours of community service. Uh, we also did some fundraisers. The biggest one was uh, For the Cure. Um, and uh, you can see that was once again with Springfield digging bigger. We're one community, just not our own school, but we all come together as one community. And uh, Dalton got me on board and I said, yeah, I'm down. Uh, so my kids said, we'll 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 take care of the trophy coach. And so Dalton took care of and the Springfield took care of, you know, running it all. We took care of getting a trophy, sold some T-shirts. And uh, we raised about a thousand dollars for the Komen Foundation, which is fantastic. And it's not pictured here, but we also when I say we uh, a lot of it was directed by Coach Dalton with our esports teams involved. We did the. Uh, Esport Olympics, which raised another thousand dollars for a charity in Springfield. So philanthropy is another big part of our community. With time remaining, uh, I don't have to tell you guys this: that students who do esports perform better. Um, I got some some very base numbers from my own team, uh, my Iron Cats. You know, like I said, ours is a little lower, which is I think it's good. So six percent of our Iron Cats never did an extracurricular activity. That's 80 for the nation. So our kids do other things. So our esports athletes are, are more quote unquote well rounded. Um, Iron Cats had better attendance and earned better grades. Uh, this year, they're in complete over 120 hours of college credit through our dual credit enrollment. So part of being with them during COVID, spending you know three four days and and chat with them talking about video games, talking about school. I really push the dual credit and it's paying off. So this year um, of our video game, our, this is not just a club, this is the varsity players as well. We'll have earned over 200 hours of dual credit. So I, out of the kids who are graduating, that identify as eSport athletes, we'll have over 200 plus hours they have earned of college credit. So they are making the grade, which is really phenomenal. And then add to this point, we've had five Iron Cats just in our two years really of existence that have received athletic scholarships. So pretty good. I'm not gonna spend time there. I'll just close with a couple of pictures that mean a lot to me and say a lot. Um, um, you might not know, but I'm I'm the coach at Heartland. And here we have a mixture of our college kids this summer, high school kids playing games, hanging out you know, staying, staying on the right track. Uh, down the bottom right is my two oldest daughters. They're at the club. They're playing smash. Uh, they're, 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 their new hero is Luke Sherman. Uh, 
because he he worked with them a little bit playing smash and they can't wait to get older and they play smash all the time they want to be esport athletes uh the one that's that has a little backstory and i was i was given permission to share this and i know we're about up with time is trent trent's a graduate from unit five about five six years ago um this semester he is finishing up his associates at heartland community college um i found him through a network of gamers he was working he's working at kroger and he had a semester left and he couldn't afford to go to college um with COVID and everything like that and so uh he's a great rocket league player so we brought him on and uh he got a he got a scholarship to finish up his last semester at heartland so he will be graduating with an associates which is going to help him with some further career stuff he wants to pursue and that was all because of uh esports and that structure and last but not least is our state champions pointing to where one day our banner will go if there are any questions i can have dalton relay to them because i cannot see at this time coach rack i don't see that we have any questions in chat um, if you want to go back to that contact information slide, they can uh, see this here, guys. If you have any questions for Coach Rakowskis, he is very communicative and very open to talk to you guys. Um, Coach, I, I teared up like twice in that presentation, so thanks for that. Um, but uh, guys, it's one o'clock. It is uh, time for our first networking session of the day. It's going to go until 1.30, and that, at that point, we'll break out into all the various sessions you can choose from. Um, Coach Rakowskis, thank you for the presentation, Story of Unit 5. Uh, you guys are definitely one of the programs that uh, not only as an IHSCA staff member, but also as a fellow competitor, uh, you have a lot of respect in our state and in our community. Um, there's one in Q&A. Thank you, Todd. I didn't see the red dot. Um, we have, let's see. Um, do you or other teachers involved also coach traditional sports? It's a great question, Coach Rakowskis. Yeah, that's funny that you should ask that. Um, so our League of Legends coach, uh, we have two of them, uh, Bryce Johnston. He is a assistant coach for the boys soccer for, uh, he's been coaching for four or five years, I think. Um, and then I was traditionally a football and basketball coach at the high school level. so i got i got to coach the two big sports and uh i think that's helped us a lot with the competitive end um i i really transplanted some of the uh coaching elements that a traditional coach would do into the esports realm and uh they they ported well and they and they and they produced really good results so um for those who are thinking about starting esports I would say don't freak out about knowing the individual games. If you can coach or you can maintain a classroom of 32 kids and teach them chemistry or math or calculus or anything like that, uh, you can handle this. This is doable. Yeah, for sure. Our League of Legends coach is also the head coach of wrestling at Springfield High School. So it, those those skills translate and, and uh, anyone that's dedicated and passionate uh, can be a really good esports coach, I think, for sure. Awesome. Well, um, See no other questions. And with the time on the schedule, we're going to get, go ahead and move on. We're going to close the session. Coach Rakowskis, thank you again for being here and for talking to everybody. Everybody, enjoy the rest of your day. Use that networking, meet some new people, and uh, we'll see you at the sessions throughout the day. Thank you, guys.